Team Fortress 2 can be described in a lot of ways. Chaotic, hilarious, iconic, but you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who'd describe Team Fortress 2 as story-driven. It's not really a game with a cohesive plot, and the game's nine protagonists are only really characterized by their voice lines and a few item descriptions. On its face, there's not much that Team Fortress 2 really has in the way of a story. Now, of course, one might say that the story isn't found in the game, but in the comics, with many of them outlining the detailed lore and background information behind many of the conflicts being fought in the lobbies of TF2 matches. But while these comics are incredibly well made, and certainly entertaining, the story they carry was built around Team Fortress 2 after it released, rather than being a planned narrative that the developers intended during TF2's development. This is why there are contradictions and retcons made between what's presented in the game versus what's said in the comics. TF2's initial design wasn't made with a concrete story in mind. Instead, the game uses visual storytelling to build a world that the player could fall into, allowing for each player to imagine and interpret the story for themselves. Instead of Gravel Pit's story being exactly defined in the pages of a comic book, players are encouraged to create their own story within each match of Team Fortress 2. This focus on natural, visual storytelling allowed for each player to create a unique relationship to the game that made it feel more personalized to them. There was never any precise answer given for why each fight was happening, so the players were inclined to write that narrative for themselves through the actions of each match. And no part of TF2 tells a story better than one of its most acclaimed game modes, a situation that makes every match feel like its own journey. It's the ultimate choose-your-own-adventure book, a conflict where every player feels like the main character in their own, personal narrative. The fight may be difficult, but the goal is simple. Get to the cart! Move, move, move! Everyone, push! Get to the cart! You will stand next to that cart, or I will stand you next to Let's that cart! Get to the cart! Payload was made first for Team Fortress 2, being added in the 2008 Gold Rush update and becoming a staple of the game from that point onwards. Payload grew into a fan-favorite mode amongst the TF2 community, being widely regarded today as the absolute best mode in the entire game by many players. And this enjoyment doesn't just stem from how fun Payload is to play. Several game modes in TF2, such as Control Points and King of the Hill, have fun and engaging gameplay for players to enjoy. But there's something different something special about Payload. The community has developed an attachment to not just its gameplay, but its aesthetic and its story. The myth of Payload. The image of a group of mercenaries slowly pushing the cart against hails of explosives has become cemented as a piece of TF2's identity, being replicated time and time again in both official and fan-made artwork. This image is the core of the story that Payload tells, a group of people coming together to overcome adversity through teamwork and strength. And it tells the story without ever having to write a single word of dialogue or show a single cutscene. For the attacking team, it all starts here. The spawn room. This is the place where you meet the team that you've been paired with, getting acquainted with the enigmatic mercenaries you've been made to work with. It's up to you how you spend this small bit of peacetime, whether you prefer to be friendly with your companions, try and coordinate a plan with your team, or sit silently by yourself. That said, the cozy atmosphere certainly lends itself to funny chat messages and constant taunting, so it's hard to not want to join in on the fun. Everything is so relaxed and casual in the spawn room. There's no role forced on any specific player, no pressure to approach this mission in any specific way, just a collective goal that you can see a glimpse of in the distance. The cart. This cart is why you're here, the proverbial ring that needs to be taken to Mordor and cast into the fire. The plan to get it there is simple. A minecart track has been laid by the ones who have fought before you. It leads directly into the heart of the enemy base. If you and your comrades can simply push the cart to the end of the track, the bomb will do the rest of the work. The cart is a goal that anyone can understand. It offers an easily identifiable objective for both teams to focus on, allowing for new players and veterans alike to always know where they need to be in order to help their team. And before the match, the cart is always visible just outside of the spawn doors, just out of reach. While the attacking team has been getting acquainted and preparing for the fight ahead of them, the defending team has been much more busy. Engineers are rushing this way and that to grab metal. Medics are building Uber and positioning themselves to take on the incoming attack. 
The defense isn't given as much time to get to know each other. As soon as each player spawns, they hit the ground running, becoming as prepared as they can for the onslaught that's scheduled to arrive. In the story of Payload, the defense is often viewed as the enemy, the source of the gunfire that rains on the attacking team as they valiantly push the cart inch by inch. And the most frustrating Payload matches are the ones that never really get going, the ones where the attacking team just can't seem to make it out of the spawn room, the ones where the story goes untold. This is why the defense is usually depicted as the antagonist in the story of Payload. If the defense is successful, then the story never gets told in the first place. The defense waits, sentries built, uber charged. As the countdown finally ends, the sirens sound, and the spawn doors open. The setup I've just described is all communicated to the player through the environment and the gameplay. Unlike many other games, which utilize the setup time strictly for each team to coordinate and prepare for their match, TF2 wants to ease the player into a cozier environment, a place where each player is able to understand the conflict, but still feel comfortable enough to not take everything too seriously. The surrounding details that litter the walls of TF2's spawn room make it feel like a place to hang out and relax, a casual atmosphere for a casual game. For the defense, there's this natural sense of teamwork and coordination as everyone prepares for the battle, and the different classes are incentivized to work together and interact with each other before the match ever starts. Narratively, this setup time is the opening where the characters are introduced, relationships are formed, and the goal for both teams is immediately established. Once the match starts, Payload's ingenious game design inclines each class toward a role that allows them to help their team and play the objective. The explosive classes are able to get people off the cart by doing massive area of effect damage, as well as taking care of any enemy sentries. Scout and Pyro can pick off individual stragglers occupying the adjacent flank routes placed throughout the map. Sniper and Spy can cripple the opposing team's pushes and defense by picking specific targets. Medic and Engineer both offer support to their team, either by allowing them to hold the line on defense or by helping them move the front line up on offense. And Heavy acts as the team's anchor, being a visual marker of where the front line is and constantly putting off offensive pressure on the opposition. These different roles aren't set in stone paths for each class to follow, but rather natural starting points for each player to use as a base to figure out their place in the team. The freeform nature of most payload maps allows for different characters to mix and match different playstyles and strategies, seeing what works and what doesn't. Unlike many modern versions of payload, each character is encouraged to interact with the cart in a different way. Classes like Spy, Sniper, or Engineer might never push the cart at all, choosing to help their team more independently rather than playing strictly next to the objective or they might see fit to be playing closer to the action, being more involved with the part of their team that's pushing the cart. This is what makes Payload feel so satisfying to play. It's designed so that a player should never feel like they don't have anything to do that can contribute to their team, offering a sense of momentum and teamwork that's unmatched in any other game mode. In this story, every character must offer their own skills to maximize their team's chance of victory. But once a match of Payload gets started, how does it maintain the player's investment? How does the story progress? Well, in many of the earlier Payload maps, there's a gradual ramping up of difficulty as the cart gets closer to the end of the track. In fact, it's similar to that of a traditional plot chart, where the stakes and level of challenge increase progressively for the heroes as the story continues, ending in a climax where the protagonist must face the most difficult part of their journey. Take Upward, for example, arguably the most prolific Payload map in all of TF2. The beginning of the map is fairly easy for the attacking team, the heroes of the story, as there aren't very many high points or walls for the villains to use to their advantage in defending the cart. It's a small challenge at the start of the journey, meant to get the heroes invested and warmed up for the greater difficulty in later sections. The second and third points both contain a lot more verticality and variety in their landscapes, allowing for the defense to put up a much greater fight with more varied opportunities for strategy and counterattacks. This is when the fight truly becomes difficult for the attacking team, as they have to push against much more resistance to take these second and third points. Many heroes will fall to the villains in these sections, as the challenge becomes too great against a competent enemy. However, if you do make it through, you're rewarded with a very small reprieve as you encroach on the last point. The Mount Doom of the Payload Story. This final section is widely regarded as the most difficult part of the map to push into, with level 3 sentries, chain-stabbing spies, and quick-scoping snipers being exceptionally common. This is when the investment built up by the previous three sections pays off. You've come this far. You can't let the villains beat you now. 
The verticality present in the final point of upward is what makes it so deadly. It's not uncommon to have constant barrages of explosives being fired at the cart from high up, out of immediate reach from anyone on the ground. On top of that, the enemy's spawn room is incredibly close to the end of the track, meaning that reinforcements are almost always pouring in from the defense's base. The heroes have reached the villain's literal front door, so it's easier than ever for people to be constantly contesting the cart while it consistently teeters on the edge of victory. The level of chaos, the increased difficulty, and the buildup of investment over the course of the match create this sense of panic and stress. Compared to how calm the spawn room was at the beginning of the match, the stakes have risen and the tone has gotten much more dramatic. This causes people to start trying a little harder, paying a little more attention, and pushing themselves just a little bit more. And if there's just enough coordination, enough timing, and enough skill between the heroes, maybe the pendulum of fate can swing in their direction. Maybe they can push the cart one final time. Victory. And suddenly, resolution. The story has come to an end. This narrative is what many of the best payload maps are designed to create. A sense of gradual progression as the heroes band together to try and beat back the villains. It's a simple story, but one that has so many twists and turns that it can play out completely differently each time. Payload isn't just a competition in a video game, it's contextualized in such a way to where it feels like you're playing out an actual mission. The game's environment, visuals, and map design all serve to immerse and invest the player in the narrative that Payload is trying to sell to the player. But what about Payload in other games? As I'm sure many of you are aware, Payload was adapted from Team Fortress 2 into a bunch of different games, with varying levels of success. Overwatch was the first notable example, with Blizzard straight up copy-pasting TF2's homework into their game without any sense of dignity or shame. As you can probably imagine, many of the elements that make Payload feel like a story weren't carried over from Team Fortress 2 into Overwatch, which causes the game mode to lose much of its charm and engagement. Many of the carts that have to be pushed don't have any relevance or significance to a greater narrative, such as the payload in Gibraltar being a plane or the payload in Junkertown being a bunch of gold and bombs. Of course, there might be reasons why you're escorting these things, but there's little context within these environments that allow the player to figure that out. There's no animation of the bombs exploding or the plane flying off to some destination when you win. It just leaves the player feeling like there wasn't any narrative reason why they were doing any of this at all. They were just playing a match in a video game, with no greater depth or story behind it. This lack of story and immersion would become a consistent trend as more games adapted the payload game mode. Splatoon, of all games, would be updated to add a mode called Tower Control, a ranked game mode where both teams push the same payload-like object toward each other's bases. While this mode is good from a game design perspective, offering a lot of the same benefits that TF2's mode had, it didn't have much of a narrative aside from the general plot of Splatoon. Fortnite actually added Payload for a season in 2020, as part of its Spy Games collection. Weirdly enough, it's probably the best implementation of Payload I've seen in terms of its visual storytelling, as it actually has context around it that explains why the teams are doing what they're doing. Apparently there's some valuable intel being stored in this truck, and you have to escort it through enemy territory to ensure it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. Genuinely a pretty good spin on the story in TF2's Payload, also playing into the whole spy angle that this season had as its theme. Frankly, I have to commend the devs for actually putting some effort into contextualizing this payload mode into Fortnite's overall world. It's a shame it only lasted for one season. These are the most prominent examples of payload being implemented in major titles after TF2, though there are also some smaller examples in Call of Duty, Paladins, and even Minecraft through the Hypixel server network. This mode has left a significant mark on first-person shooters and even gaming as a whole, and yet it's only really being done justice in its very first appearance. As much as TF2 did to perfect the ideas of other games that came before it, few games have made a valiant effort to perfect the original ideas TF2 has brought to the table. Games like Overwatch and Paladin simply lifted many of TF2's ideas without any consideration for why they work so well, and both of them later had to remove those ideas because they didn't fit with their game's core identity. Payload is the most obvious example of this. The reason why Payload works so well in TF2 is because it builds off of its environment and characters to tell a story, and then uses that story to invest the players in its gameplay. This cycle of investment is what I believe causes Team Fortress 2 to leave such a lasting impact on the people who play it, creating an air of familiarity that makes it easy to come back year after year. When you've experienced so many moments and stories with each of these nine characters, it's hard to feel like you can just leave it all behind for good. 
While many people have praised Team Fortress 2's gameplay and art style, the story it tells is one of the most underrated pieces of what makes the game so great. And it's not a story in any comic or piece of lore. It's a story created in every match of Team Fortress 2 by the players who fight in it. Payload is the premier example of how to design a game mode in a way that not only offers a great gameplay experience, but also tells an excellent story.